Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Next-Gen GA Fund announces Jumpstart products and pricing. There's been a management shakeup at Bombardier. And SpaceX gets a landing pad at Cape Canaveral. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. We've been wondering when the next-gen GA fund would finally get in gear, and it looks like they're now in motion big time. Following the establishment of the Jumpstart GA 2020 program earlier this week, the next-gen GA fund has just announced its first order to supply basic ADS-B compliant solutions to general aviation aircraft owners, as well as introductory pricing. The initial Jumpstart program selection process included five avionics manufacturers' basic ADS-B rule-compliant offerings. With the L3 Lynx NGT-1000 product and strong company support, they delivered best overall value to the Jumpstart program, culminating in an order for 10,000 units. Introductory dealer pricing for the L3 Lynx NGT-1000 will begin at $1,599. Orders can be placed by FAA authorized repair stations and dealers through either L3 Aviation Products or directly to the GA Fund. ANN will keep you posted as we're sure more news will be forthcoming. For more information about the Next Gen GA Fund, visit www.nextgenfund.com. The multifaceted Bombardier Incorporated has been a family-controlled company since its beginnings as a manufacturer of snowmobiles. However, it appears that financial results are thicker than blood. Pierre Boudouin is stepping down as president and chief executive officer. Boudouin has held this position for six and a half years and will now be coming the executive chairman of Bombardier. His father, Laurent, will retire from his existing position as company chairman. Elaine Belmare, a former United Technologies Corporation executive, will take the position previously held by Boudouin. Reports indicate that this management shift is related to recent poor financial results. It could be said that the handwriting has been on the wall for a while as we look at continued problems with the introduction of the Bombardier C-Series commercial transport and the delay and ultimate halt of the Learjet 85 program. With a serious concern regarding cash flow, it remains to be seen what other actions may be taken to bring the company back to a stable financial condition. After the break, SpaceX and the Air Force reach an agreement for a landing pad. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The U.S. Air Force has recently signed a five-year leasing agreement with SpaceX that will allow for the creation of the first ever landing pad at Launch Complex 13 at historic Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. SpaceX plans to repurpose the launch complex to successfully support their construction of a vertical landing facility suitable for the return of reusable first stage boosters of their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles. 
LC-13 was originally used for operational and test launches of various Atlas ICBM models and was the most used and longest serving of the original four Atlas pads. Now it will be used in an amazing new way. SpaceX has been experimenting with landing a booster on a floating barge. As their technology improves, moving to a land-based operation will remove the complexity of landing on a small floating object. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN's CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim recognizes the bureaucratic quagmire that the FAA has become and expresses his views on decreasing the role in interference created by the FAA. Here's this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. It, uh, it's come to my attention over the course of a number of years that the FAA has the controlling interest in the future of aviation and, to a certain extent, aerospace. And yet, as I look over the way this industry and other industries have interfaced with the FAA, I've seen bright shining stars, examples of how certain aspects of the industry can control their own destiny. A couple of examples include the ASTM outreach to FAA in a number of regards. The LSA industry, at first anyway, showed tremendous promise with a number of new designs being certificated, more than we've seen in any recent period of time, because for a change, it was developed through industry consensus, industry experts and industry cooperation. While it's fallen on hard times since because the FAA has taken a more stentorian role in the whole thing and become more and more aggressive about their way versus the ASTM way, it still shows that the industry is better off empowering its destiny than is the FAA. And then we look at other examples, the International Council of Air Shows and the ACE program in which air show pilots are literally responsible for their own destiny with some cooperation oversight from the FAA, of course, but something has made the industry far more safety conscious and as a result has built a better industry. So here's my point. It's time for all of our associations, all of our organizations, and all of our major expertise in this industry to work work together to find ways to control our own destiny rather than just by default handing it to the FAA. It sh has not shown any real interest in helping the aviation or aerospace industry grow. It just simply is interested in covering its own behind. What happens if we can get the FAA more out of our lives to do the things it is qualified to do while we do the things we're qualified to do? For the Aero News Network Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, the European Space Agency space plane has a successful flight. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Path. The European Space Agency successfully launched and recovered an autonomous space plane in a suborbital flight earlier this week. This flight was to test concepts for a reusable space transportation system. The space plane reached an altitude of 256 miles. The U.S. House Science, Space and Technology Committee announced their support to reaffirm Congress's commitment to NASA as a multi-mission agency. They expressed support of NASA's involvement in science, aeronautics, human spaceflight, and exploration to include Mars. A company named NoFlyZone.org will help property owners list UAV flight restrictions that apply to their property. Users will have the ability to customize airspace access preferences to allow certain drones such as deliveries, 
but restrict photography. In Alaska, pilots now have access to the Alaska Weather Camera Program. The program improves safety and efficiency by providing pilots with near real-time visual weather information. The cameras are positioned to pick up airport and mountain pass weather conditions. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. The EAA says it supports a technical amendment to the ADSB out requirements as a first step to exploring solutions for amateur built aircraft to meet FAA's year 2020 mandate if they want to operate an airspace that now requires an altitude encoding transponder. Under this amendment, equipment installed in an experimental airplane will have to meet the regulatory operational standards, but will not have to hold the FAA-issued TSO. This is similar to other avionics equipment currently installed in many experimental aircraft. Currently, the lowest cost purchase and installation for such equipment is in the $5,000 range. Manufacturers producing a non-TSO'd ADS-B out system aimed at the experimental market should be able to do so at a significant cost reduction. Now it remains to be seen which manufacturers will step up to the plate. Well, that's our program for Friday, February 13th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday. Please join us every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.